quickly. I've got stuff to do. Uh, I normally don't do reaction videos to... I want to be fair. To social justice warriors, uh, Trump supporters, uh, anything polit I mean, I generally don't do reaction videos to other other people's videos in particular, but uh, on campus stuff, I mean, I talk about it a bit, but I generally don't do videos about them. For a couple reasons. One, other people have done it better. I, I mention this all the time. Like, the second you see something that it's like, hey, I want to say something about that, someone else has said, a uh, hundred people have said something else, and have said it better or more eloquently or, or funnier or whatever. Alternately, uh, some of the, the worst stuff that where it's really annoying and it's like, okay, I gotta respond to this. It's usually because it's awful. Like, it's really annoying and irritating, and if I'm gonna do a proper reaction to it, I have to do a little bit of research, and I have to watch it several times. And I hate doing that. So I generally don't do these. But this one, this, it's it's got my name written all over it, if not literally. Uh, this is science must fall. <laughs> Hashtag science must fall. And there are new people. There's a, a, a. I just found out about this literally less than an hour ago. There are, is a movement called Fallists. I don't know if they're calling themselves that, or if other people are calling them. But science must fall. Which sounds cool. Like if that is that the name of a band? That sounds like a cool name for a band to me. But. <sighs> I gotta go over this. Take the next round. Okay, so um, can I respond to your submissions because I wanted to directly respond. I was actually thinking about this coming here because I thought that it was going to be one of the, the, the coming questions, how do we even start to decolonize science because science is true because it is science and you know what can you do? And my, my response to that was if I personally were committed to enforcing decolonization, science as a whole is a product of Western modernity and the whole thing should be scratched off. <laughs> <laughs> And the premise is, behind this video specifically, I'm not going to react to anything else, uh, movements, uh, that requires research. Proper reaction requires research, and I don't have time for that right now. Maybe later I will, I don't know, but not right now. The gist of which is, science. And these students, this one woman in the yellow, it's a cute yellow, uh, sort of a sweatery vest, like an open sweater, sort of. Like a button down. Anyway, uh, her premise is science is a racist. Okay. And she would like to scratch it out of history because it's Eurocentric. And I gotta react to that. A couple, couple points. And briefly, she doesn't say a specific branch of science or a particular university system or a particular science foundation or a particular country's government or a particular international uh, science uh, organization or endowment or any of that stuff. I'm taking this woman at her word. She actually says science. So I'm all things being equal. I'm gonna gonna assume she means what she says and she says what she means. So the empirical process of studying reactions from the natural world, observable phenomenon in a repeatable fashion so you can see how things work, is itself inherently racist, is her supposition. Now, a lot of people are laughing in that room, including her, so I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she's at least a little joking, but, but man, that looks a lot like she's saying science itself is racist. And... Really? <laughs> okay. So, and she'd like to, to start over, and then uses examples. Honestly, I, I, 
I got so many directions to go in this one. I'm gonna just grab a bunch of them and, and see where, how this works out. <laughs> I've never done something like this before. Mentioning, I actually sniffed this one around a little bit. Like I kind of looked around because eh, God, where to go? Where to start? Where to start? On the internet, everything is reduced to sound bites. Uh, tweets. I mean, Twitter is is a a wonderful analogy for the the state of the world we live in, where it's like everything's 150 some characters in length. When you compress ideas, summarize them like, them like that. You lose things. You lose uh, information, facts, and importantly, context. That's real important. That's a big deal. Um, a lot of the stupid politician quotes, while I, I'm not particularly fond of a lot of politicians right now, uh, taken in context, a lot of the, the, the stupid things they say that will, <sighs> aren't better. It takes a lot to turn stupid into smart, but aren't as bad. They generally, in context, it's like, oh, he meant this, he's taking this, or she's assuming that, so she drew this conclusion. Oh, okay, it sounds stupid by itself. It sounds a little better when you take the whole thing in context. So this was a, a brief statement from a longer speech, and I had to look at that. Once again, it's the reason I don't do these. It takes up too much time that I could be doing other funner, less annoying stuff. But I wanted to give this a try. And it, it I was like, because my thinking was maybe what she actually means, and if you took this in context, maybe they're talking about there is sort of a reaction right now. This is a real thing happening where scientific institutions are sort of coming under some skepticism. Being brief, I want to be brief, brief, brief. Once again, maybe I'll go into detail in some other format. But the premise is, facts themselves have a half-life. It's not that things we discover are later untrue, it's just we draw conclusions from certain facts and certain data sets, and then we learn those conclusions might not be as accurate as we thought, or maybe there was more to the story, or new facts come in, or maybe that study was uh, compromised in some way, or maybe it wasn't as detailed or unbiased as we, we'd hoped. So facts themselves have a half-life, and people forget that. Um, I'm not even going to speak in vagaries. I have a very specific example that always comes to mind when I bring up this topic. I have high cholesterol. I'm getting old, it's a thing that's happening. So I was given a list of things not to eat, and I was surprised that eggs were on that list. And I was surprised because that's old information. Fact number one, a syllogism, uh, a conclusion drawn from two facts, from two statements. Eggs contain a lot of cholesterol. They are. They are high in cholesterol. Fact number one. Fact number two. Eating high cholesterol foods tends to lead to higher cho raised cholesterol levels. Also true. So, conclusion, eating eggs raises your cholesterol, don't eat eggs. And that was accepted wisdom for decades, and it turned out to be wrong. There was a 15-year study, it was a big study, where they studied, among other things, uh, other dietary things, but eggs was one of them. And it turns out, for whatever reason, Eggs don't increase the amount, in general, of serum cholesterol, the bad cholesterol in your body. For some reason that doesn't stick or it doesn't stay with you, I guess it just gets pooped out, I don't know. But, as it turns out, it's not true. Eggs don't, generally, you can eat an egg a day with no effect, no obvious effect. You can eat a few with very little. And that's what I mean. We learn more. The conclusions we draw have to be amended constantly. Science has to be ruthless. It has to be, you know, things we like, simple ideas that are easy for us to hold on to, that we grasp, that we all know. you got to throw them away in a heartbeat if it turns out they're not right, or not accurate, or something more has been learned. That's science. And on top of that, you know, so that's one thing. Another thing was... Uh, we're kind of learning that a lot of the results coming from certain 
university systems are are unrepeatable like they they can't be re they can't be recreated and that's the whole point of science is you're you're demonstrating this is how things work because this is how we did a thing under these controlled circumstances and later someone can do the same thing and it'll work the same way except in this case it doesn't and in an alarming number of studies done by universities recently but that once again that's another topic brief 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 so that's what i was thinking like maybe that what she's really that this is just a a bit but if you look at her larger argument, the argument of these, these students and so on, that that's going to be the argument. They're going to draw into question certain uh, conclusions, certain assumptions made about the scientific community. Okay, that's perfectly reasonable. I actually happen to agree. It's why I'm not really on board with Bill Nye the Science Guy and Neil deGrasse because while they're wonderful skeptics and they do fantastic work, the second that the facts come from a particular source, particularly universities or NASA in particular, the skepticism disappears and it should never disappear, is my point, I guess. Is that you should always be skeptical, uh, always questioning. And science doesn't give you conclusions, it just allows you to draw conclusions from facts, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole thing. That's what I was thinking, that maybe that's what they meant. Turns out that's not what they meant. She really does mean science. The, the concept of science should be scrapped. And this is a university student, like a real honest-to-God universe, a, a person who is to learn in a place of learning is saying, eh, fuck if science. Want, if we want practical solutions to how to decolonize science, we'd have to restart science from, I don't know, an African perspective, from our perspective of how we've experienced science. For instance, um, I had a question for all the science people. Is uh, There's a, a place uh, in Kezer, in Mkabi Alingana, and they believe that through uh, the magic, the black magic, you call it black magic, they call it witchcraft to others, that you are able to send a lightning to strike someone. So can you explain that scientifically? Because it's if it's something that happens, it will happen. Over the course of this video, and I'm going to try to, to, once again, do something I never do. I'm going to intercut bits of this video here. She mentions that uh, sweater lady uh, mentions that, hey, science people, it, it, it's incredible. Like, hey, science people, I know in, in our, in certain countries in Africa, there are sorcerers who can cast lightning bolts at people, call down lightning and strike people with lightning. Explain that. And she says it in such a, in such a mic, mic drop tone. <sighs> God, this fucking video. <laughs> Compulsory discussion, if ever there was one. Uh, what about the rest of this thing? Uh, what is the scientific explanation for wizards? I think the, the statement, the word in her statement that really sticks out for me is, well, I, that's a, th you know, guys who can kill guys with lightning, that's a thing I believe in. And there's our problem. There's the rub, as it were. It's not... You're, confl you're comparing... I believe that there are guys out there who can just point a finger and lightning bolt a guy like a, a wizard from first edition D&D. &D. And I believe that the entire science of aerodynamics works. I haven't seen empirically any study saying that guys can lightning bolt other guys. I have ridden in a plane before though. It's not a question of faith. I mean, dear God, not a day goes by when I don't see Islam versus Christianity cross my path at least once or twice. Not a day. It's something that comes up constantly. You know, Islam is this, or it isn't this, or Christianity is this, or it's not this, or whatever. Those are articles of faith. That's dogma, that's religion, that's belief, that's something inside you. That's how you uh, come to terms with things you can't explain, how 
you answer questions that have no answer or that are very personal or are very spiritual. It's not how do you lightning bolt guys? <laughs> you know, my belief trumps yours because my belief isn't a belief. It's an observation. I know that it's possible for people to fly in an airplane because I've been in an airplane and I've seen airplanes fly. I've yet to see someone get struck down by lightning because a guy went all storm from the X-Men on them. Don't confuse faith with science. That's not what science is. It's not Science doesn't work because we agree on it. Um, the cat jumps up. Rawr, say hello. Oh, that pretty face. It's not like if everyone on a plane loses faith in the pilot, it's just going to tumble out of the sky. It doesn't work that way. It, it, the plane works because of scientific principles. What's the the sorceress origin of of, <laughs> of 747s? It doesn't work the other way around. It doesn't work um, the other I, way around. I need to address you directly. When we started this, we, we agreed on certain house rules. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And by you doing that, you're disrespecting the sacred place. Of the space, and so I'd like to ask you to first please apologize Sorry. to the panel directly, and then number two, understand the rules that we went by in the space. All right, I'm watching this video again. I've actually watched it a couple times, I'm getting sick of watching it. Uh, some of the students, like, I'm kind of glossing over stuff, but now hearing it again, it's like, holy shit, this is a safe space. And this is perfect. This is... It's perfect. It's casual racism, an attack on on science, and a safe space. It's a perfect trifecta of failure. This is an amazing video. I'm going to post a link to it. I might post more than one. Because this is pretty amazing. This is great. It's not great. It's, it's fucking awful. No! Here's the thing. I generally don't, like, when some, I mean, I saw some comments on this video, this video specifically, like, this scares me, or something like that. It's like, no, people stay, say stupid shit all the time. That's not scary. So I will finish. See, that very response is the reason why I am not in the science faculty. I did science throughout my high school years, and there was a lot of things that I just, um, yeah, but it's fine. But Western modernity, is the direct antagonistic factor to decolonization because Western knowledge is totalizing. It is saying that it was Newton and only Newton who knew or saw an apple falling and then out of nowhere decided that gravity existed and created a, an equation and that is it. For the re whether people knew Newton or not or whether whatever happens in Western Africa, Northern Africa, the thing is the only way to explain gravity is through Newton who sat under a tree and saw an apple fall. So Western modernity is the problem that decolonization directly deals with to say that we are going to decolonize by having knowledge that is produced by us, that speaks to us, and that is able to accommodate knowledge from our perspective. So if you're saying that you disagree with her approach, it means that you are vested in the Western and Eurocentric way of understanding, which means you yourself still need to go back internally, decolonize your mind, come back and say, how can I re-look at what I've been studying all these years? Because Western knowledge is very pathetic. I mentioned earlier, I have, like, I don't know where to start with this. There's, there's two routes here. Let's go to the first one, calling everything racism. It's now become air pollution is racist. This is the problem with that. This is a problem with that. If you make a particular term, I mean, take something you don't like, racism. Certainly, no one likes racism. And then just conflate it with anything bad. Like, you not only cause the, the, the word you don't like to become useless. Like, these, this omelet is racist. Well, no, it's not racist, it's just not very good. I don't like it. That's what you're saying. By saying anything you don't like is, the thing, is another thing you don't like, you not only make the word lose its meaning, at least a little bit, 
you also tend to confuse yourself. You might actually come to believe that this omelet or something is racist. Certainly, throughout history, certain scientific institutions, NASA being one of them, speaking of them, speak of the devil, <laughs> have, have had people in them that were very racist, particularly in the early, uh, in the early space race. I mean, dear God, how long was it before there were the first black astronaut or the first female astronaut? So, the problem is if you confuse racist people or racist communities or communities that, even if they don't encourage racist attitudes, don't discourage them, with the actual concept of science itself, then you sound like a nut. Thus this video, thus this video is getting the reaction it is. <laughs> Evil tenant and friends today. All right. And not even to dismiss this woman's beliefs. I don't at all. It's if she really believes that. And it's like, once again, you can't logically prove a negative. I can't prove that lightning guys don't exist. I can only say that, hey, we have not observed this thing. We can, and she wants to know what's the scientific explanation for for warlocks, and I'm like, well, if they show up regularly and have do their shit repeatedly, then we can demo, we can study it. it. Hasn't happened, can't do it. That's how science works. You, you're checking, you're measuring observable phenomenon. I haven't seen lightning guys, to my knowledge. You know, UCLA, UCLA hasn't done a study on on sorcerers, so no data set, nothing, nothing to compare, nothing to try to to recreate. So no, no explanation for it whatsoever. Funny that a more a more cynical person would say a bit more than that than perhaps I would. But once again, I, I don't want to make fun of these people. I really don't. Uh, nonetheless, they're confusing different ideas, treating them like they're the same thing. And they're not, and that's and that's why this is this video is getting the attention it is, and that's why I have to call. I mean, the thing that, that bugged me a lot. the The first thing that popped into my mind was a science is racist or Eurocentric or like it's a Eurocentric concept. Is that's that's utter nonsense. Some of the greatest historical s examples of scientists, mathematics. Uh, ballistics, chemistry, didn't come from Europe. They came from what is now uh, the Middle East, India, China, and Africa <laughs> comes to mind. Never mind more recent history. I mean, when she said that science itself is racist, the first thing that popped into my mind was George Washington Carver and the incredible work he did with, with, uh, with botanical science but also with farming and, and, and chemistry. I mean, an amazing mind from a guy who is not European in the slightest. I mean, I, so I went and looked up information on George Washington Carver, and of course he came up in a list of famous black scientists. Famous, and I think a lot of these guys were American, a fair number of them anyway. Uh, Benjamin Banneker, Emma Chappell, Excellent example. Uh, 14 U.S. patents. Uh, and he discovered bioluminescence. I mean, uh, who else? Who's a good example? Garrett Morgan, George Washington Carver, I think should be higher up on that list. Uh, James West. Oh, that's an old one. Uh, foreign pat 200 foreign patents. 47 U.S. patents. Microphones, polymer foil efforts in the 60s. Amazing. Mae Jemison. Thank you, Mae Jemison. Thank you, whoever this list is from. Famousscientist.org. Uh, first black astronaut. First black woman to travel. First black woman to travel in space. Awesome, awesome. Uh, who else? Uh, great examples, great examples. Um... American ophthalmologist Patricia Bath. Uh, who else? 
who was also the first African-American woman doctor to receive a patent for a medical invention. I mean, it's a long list to say that science is Eurocentric, I think degrades the many achievements of black, or for that matter, any non-European scientist. Okay. Just a tear I had to go on, because it's like, it's the first thing that occurred to me. Going through this, again, it, it just, at parts of this, it's obviously science is a tool of colonization, and I'm like, I don't have a response, for, I don't have a good response for that. It's like, n no, it's not. It's like, I did science in high school. I'm going to be a little skeptical of that. Just a smidge. But we have to deconstruct science itself, the concept? Okay, give it a go, lady. Because that's not what I've seen in this video. I've looked through this. I'm, I've been starting to go through, God help me, go through the uh, full meeting. And it's once again, I want to be fair, and I want to be, I, I don't want to be dismissive. But god damn it, parts of this, my, it's like, I just want to do an eye roll so hard I'm staring at my brain. <sighs> we just decided out of nowhere that gravity exists? Hold on, let me check this. No, it seems to exist. It started out as a theory, because that's how science fucking works. It's like, oh, shit falls down. And not in other directions, generally, without the application of force. And then slowly we study the phenomenon, and then theory becomes hypothesis, and then uh, we start to measure it. How does it work? Uh, acceleration, uh, objects, two objects, mass tends to attract other masses, the force is called gravity. We just gave an existing thing a name. That's what science is. Because we observed it, and, and that's the thing. We didn't decide out of nowhere that gravity exists. Are you saying if we didn't, we would just be floating around? Uh, it's like... This is doing it. This second viewing, I am losing the ability to take this woman seriously. Be and that's a shame. And I don't think this person or any of the people in this room would take this. I mean, I'm hearing a fair amount of dissent. Like, see, she's saying bullshit, and people in the background are like, really? Are you saying science isn't a thing? She's like, look, people just assume science is real. It's like, it's just a way of describing the world around us. It's it's not a thing you can dis you can disprove a way of thinking. Think, oh my god. As though there's another way to to study gravity other than observing it. I mean, once again, conflating belief with science. I mean, science is the opposite of belief. It's like, look, you might trust Neil deGrasse, for example. Something he said, simply because he's a kind of a famous scientist. And generally, you're, you're kind of staking yourself on his reputation. Like, I know he's not just going to say bullshit because he's a very scientifically minded guy. He probably checked shit out or checked or came, his information came from reliable sources, people who looked at things, verified information, and so on. That's where that, that faith is she's describing is coming from. I mean, people don't... There's a reason I go to a hospital, not a faith healer. Although some people will choose that other one, it's not a common one, because they're because you know a guy who screams about the Jeebus and and smacks you on the head and then accepts a lot of money from parishioners generally isn't as reliable as you know someone who can give you an aspirin. And also the statement from people like us, who are we? Once again, there are a lot of African scientists. African Americans, African Europeans, and African Africans. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, I'm gonna look it up. 
I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up right now because there is one of the best examples that I can think of is the Laffer curve. It's a relationship between uh, economic ability, activity, and the rate of taxation. Uh, Arthur Laffer, he didn't invent the concept. It was He popularized it. The actual original one came from North African Arab, and I'm going to fuck his name up, and I'm sorry, Ibn Khaldun in the 14th freaking century. Uh, born May 27th, 1332, died 1406. Lived a fairly long life for a guy in North Africa in the 14th century. Good on him. A into the 15th century. Rock on. He discovered, uh, he was a polymath. He's an amazing guy. Uh, I mean, look him up. God, I should put a link to his to his wiki entry. He's an amazing dude, very interesting. And not European at all. And we know a lot about this guy. <laughs> it's, he's an amazing dude, and we know a lot about him. Very influential. Influential to Europeans. A very swarthy dude from North Africa influenced European scientists. And that's the thing about science. It's dem democratizing. It's freeing. Is that no one gets... You, you, the color of your skin isn't going to affect your scientific results. Unless you're doing a scientific study on skin color, I guess. It's neither here yes. nor there. Someone might... And someone might be racist and ignore someone or discount someone. It's like, oh, this guy, but for one of those people or something like that, sure, that can happen and has happened in the past. That needs to be acknowledged. But it's not the concept of science itself that did that. It's individual people who were assholes. And I don't think she gets that. Her idea of the way science works... And history. I mean, God damn it, that's blowing my mind. Okay. <laughs> Even if you didn't, weren't aware of more recent, I mean, more recent uh, achievements by, by scientists of all creeds and color, I mean, George Washington Carver is so fucking famous. How do you not know about these guys? Okay. All right, I'm finishing this up because I got stuff to do. And it's getting late, and I spent way too much time on this thing already. All right. Once again, she clearly gets worked up near the end. I've been there myself. We've got video documentation to prove it. But this is nuts. I mean, the idea that we're going to decolonize our minds or, once again, that, that science belongs to some particular com country or ethnicity or anything like that can be scientifically disproven, now that I think about it. More than that, more than that, it's, uh, let's, uh, what is she really suggesting? I mean, really, you're getting rid of science. So everything we know about biology, medicine, chemistry, electricity, just ignore that shit. We need to get rid of it? I mean, that's, it, it's not just the body of knowledge. I mean, even if we stop, we decide we're going to stop doing this. Ugh. We're just going to forget about everything we know about ballistics, about trajectories, about uh, space travel, about uh, neuroscience, about every goddamn thing in the world that we've learned through the scientific method. This is why I looked, I looked into this deeply. Like, I started looking around this, looking at the full meeting, and it's like, this, she's got to mean something other than this. But that's actually what she means. And that's nuts. Yeah, and I'm going to make a judgment on that. This is really crazy. This is a crazy idea. I think if someone sat this woman down and like had a serious talk about, well, what do you really mean by that? 
I mean, are you saying we are, I mean, the, huh, talk about anti-vaxxer. You're not just talking about getting rid of vaccinations. You're talking about sweeping away the entire medical system and everything. Does she understand what science is? And I think the answer is no. Like, I think she has preconceived notions of what it means and represents that are not matched by a lot of the rest of us. You have to be open to new ideas. Agreed. I absolutely agree. But the idea that we have to get rid of an old... And that's my problem. She doesn't have a... a ah, it's so confounding. You can't just say, I'm going to get rid of science, or that we should, or that's a thing we should do. You have to prove that. It's like going back to the beginning where people are like, ah, oh, this scares me a lot. It doesn't, because there's this is nonsense. This is obvious nonsense. This person doesn't understand what science is, or if she really does, is talking crazy. I mean, what are... is talking crazy, because what is the... What are the permutations? Where does this lead? Where do you go? I mean, do you really mean getting rid of all medicine, all science, all electricity? All, I mean, are you talking about starting back as cavemen again? For what? To gain what? A new understanding? Like, look, lady, if you can find some new under new way of understanding things, about learning new stuff, fucking do it. It's w what makes me think this person has nothing and kind of is kind of aware of it, at least slightly, is that if you have a new process, a new way of learning things, a, a new idea or a new uh, philosophy or something that allow that gives you a real advantage, that that you know, quote unquote works, can cohabitate with other ideas. It, it will, in fact, compete with them, and if it can, if it can really compete, then it will eventually overcome them. Uh, the idea of the germ theory of disease took a long time to catch on because people were just are just really sold on the idea that it wasn't microorganisms causing sickness and disease. But bit by bit, it worked. Antibiotics worked. Uh, antiseptics worked. And it's hard to argue with results. It's nearly impossible to argue with results. <laughs> I think in the marketplace of ideas, I, I, you know, if you have something better, give it up. Don't just talk about how better ideas can come about if we can get rid of all of the old ones. You're not going to get rid of all the old ones. People aren't going to let go of something that works for nothing. Show me what you got first. Anyway, I'm done with this. I've got other stuff to do. <laughs> and... I might go back to this a little. Maybe I'll, I'll continue a bit more later. But that's all. I'm out. Uh